thanks everyone for joining our webinar. My name is Agnes Zwanner. I'm the Senior Product Marketing Manager here at Creditor Watch. I'll be your host for today and I'm joined by Frank McKenna, our uh, Chief Product Officer. Uh, he's going to be sharing his insights on how streamlining customer onboarding and um, make it getting faster approvals can get uh, can boost your business's growth potential. Um, so before we start, I will go through um, a few housekeeping points. Um, we would love to answer any of your questions throughout the session, so please just put them in the questions box. Um, we'll try to address it during the session. Um, if not, um, we'll send you an email to answer your question um, by email. Uh, we'd also like you to join in and participate um, in the poll questions that we have throughout the session. Um, all you need to do is select the answer that you'd like to select and then click submit. Um, and then lastly, we'll make the copy a copy of the presentation today available to you. So keep an eye out in your inbox. Um, we'll be emailing that to you after the session. Okay, well, um, so now that that's out of the way, um, I'd love to introduce you guys to uh, our Chief Product Officer, Frank McKenna. Um, so Frank has joined us recently at Creditor Watch, um, and I think it's been about six months since you've joined, Frank. Um, and do, do you want to start off by giving us an introduction of who you are, what you've been doing, um, and your role at Creditor Watch? <laughs> Great, thanks. Hello everyone, and uh, it's great to be here. Um, just a bit of back, my background. Um, I've been in digital innovation space for over 20 years, working in both large corporations like Experian and Commonwealth Bank, as well as several scrappy startups for my sins. Uh, my specialty is FinTech SaaS product offerings so that utilize big data analytics and workflows. When Creditor Watch reached out to me a little over six months ago, I was happily working in a company that focused on reducing electricity and water consumption in commercial buildings using machine learning and IoT data. When Patrick, uh, the Creditor Watch CEO, explained to me how Creditor Watch is helping the economy grow by enabling companies to quickly build trust so they can do business via credit, I was intrigued. When I met the team and saw how many innovative things they were doing, I was excited to join. So as I can said, I've been here about six months. Uh, as Chief Product Officer, my responsibility is for the product strategy of Creditor Watch and also delivering innovative solutions to solve our customers' most pressing problems in line with our vision. Awesome, thanks for the introduction, Frank. Um, and now for those of you who aren't familiar with um, Creditor Watch, uh, we're Australia's leading uh, commercial credit bureau. Uh, we take enormous pride in taking care of our customers and enabling them to best solutions to simply get on with business, knowing that their cash flow is protected. Um, we have the largest commercial credit bureau um, customer base in Australia, and 90% of our customers use us uniquely. So that means we have really unique data that enables us to deliver some really unique insights uh, to our customers. Um, we started off as a commercial credit bureau about 13 years ago, and since then we've rapidly grown our suite of solutions. We now offer a range of credit risk management solutions that spans across um, onboarding to monitoring and all the way through to collections. Um, we're very proud of how, how our products and platforms perform. We're 100% hosted on Australian data centres and we're, we ensure that we're secure and stable. Um, Something we're also really proud of is our 99.95% .95 uptime. Um, we like to boast about that. It's something, I think that that's a great achievement. Um, okay, so Frank, you've been around for about six months now and you've been spending a lot of time with customers. Um, can you share some insight on what you've been hearing from them and um, what's happening in the market? Um. Yes, I've uh, since I've started, I've, I've been lucky enough to have many excellent conversations with customers, both large and small, Agnes, as well as many key industry stakeholders. And I have noticed a few common themes. I think the overarching theme with credit managers is that they're feeling the pressure. They're telling me it is coming from the usual suspects, but is with much greater intensity um, in the current economic headwinds. Um, the three main areas where they're feeling pressure or this concentration is with the higher default risks. 
Um, many of the, the credit managers I've talked to are focused on minimizing write downs in tougher economic environments with uh, more payment defaults, and there is a noticeable uptick. Um, that perception and increase in payment defaults is backed up by Credit Watch's latest business risk index March report, which indicated a 20% increase in payment defaults uh, year on year. The customers are telling me that they are looking at renewing, uh, reviewing their credit policies using better decisioning data and really tightening up the credit processes to be able to handle it. Um, another area which is productivity, that old uh, chestnut of doing more with less. Many of the teams I've talked to haven't grown in five years, um, but their customer numbers have, and they have to somehow manage this. What, I've, what they've been talking about is they've been looking towards digitization and automated workflows to help solve the problem. And it's not just digitization, they've actually been looking at the processes involved as well. And quite a lot have been talking about optimizing the processes, such as a stage credit decisioning process onboarding, so they can actually reduce costs as well as speed it up. By that, I mean um, that they would do a triaging where instead of doing a full credit report for everybody, they would do a first one saying, is this one uh, a low credit risk, we're going to get a uh, high credit risk, we're, going to, we're not going to give them credit and just get that through without doing a full credit assessment. Um, and the last one, which is a, a, a which even the credit managers and all the stakeholders will tell me is a, new, uh, a more evolving and shifting trend, is that there's a, a, not just a focus on the compliance element of it and the reducing risk, but also a growth focus. That as businesses are facing tougher sales, um, I have seen more and more credit managers taking this growth focus to increase flexibility in the sales cycles while balancing the heightened risk of payment defaults. Um, and what this is uh, manifesting itself is a clear increase in collaboration between the sales and credit teams to get customers on board sooner, buying more and paying faster. Um, I've attended several customer meetings for our onboarding solution, Apply Easy, where the majority of people in the room from the customer side are salespeople. And in those meetings, the credit managers are talking about speeding up onboarding faster time to ordering um, by reducing decision times from days or hours to even uh, so from days and weeks to hours and um, they're talking about uh, application completion rates and decreasing that um, sorry increasing application rates you don't want to be decreasing it that, would, that wouldn't help you and um, they want to increase application completion rates and also they want to provide sensible flexibility in the credit limit allocation um, what I hear more and more about is this hybrid mix of, of a, a mix of automated straight through processing and more involved decisioning processes. For example, a customer of a certain risk profile might be requesting 100,000 in credit. You would automatically approve 50,000 and they can start ordering straight away and the remaining 50,000 would go through a more extensive process. Um, and some companies are actually looking at shadow limits for the account management side by pre approving increased amounts based on uh, a refreshed credit risk analysis and therefore when customers call they can actually provide it or proactively reaching out to them to let them know about this um, increased available credit to help their sales process. Yeah, well, that's definitely um, a shift um, from what I've seen a couple of years ago where, you know, the focus was about minimizing risk but also um, improving productivity. I think that's still a big factor here and still a major challenge for many businesses, but um, the collaboration between sales and the credit teams trying to collaborate together so they create a better customer experience and essentially say yes to customers faster and get them starting um, start trading faster. Um, so I'd love to get some feedback from our audience today and see what they, their um, main pain points are today. I know you've already done the research, just curious um, what everyone else is feeling. Um, we'll give people maybe about 10 seconds to, to um, complete the poll. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, just um, click one of the radio buttons um, with the answers that you, you want to submit and um, we'll close this off shortly. Um, okay, I think we've got some pretty good answers now. Um, cool. So answers. Um, 
Cool. So conducting proper due diligence and minimising loss uh, has 40%, uh, sorry, 47% of the votes, uh, followed by speeding up sales and customer acquisition, which is what you uh, mentioned, Frank, as well, um, and then improving customer experience. So thanks everyone for um, putting in your answers. Really appreciate the insight. Um, so just um, moving on and sticking to our topic of onboarding and getting getting um, onboarding and uh, faster approvals. Um, you mentioned, you know, the alignment between sales and um, credit teams um, to improve customer experience and then also um, increasing conversion rates and um, application completion rates. Um, so let's dig deeper into that. Um, how do you see customer? Where do you see customer onboarding going? Um, and what do end customers actually expect from um, businesses when they sign up or apply for um, credit? Um, yes, thanks, Agnes. Um, in onboarding, I've noticed that the conversations with customers are now starting uh, with a desire to provide a great customer experience, as we see um, over a quarter of our customers. That's uh, of the poll, that's a, a priority. And companies are realizing that a customer's first experience with, with a company sets the tone for the rest of relationships. Providing customers with a speedy, clear, and pleasant experience leads directly to increased completion rates, faster sales cycles, and more repeat sales. But the question is, what does great customer experience mean? Firstly, it usually means an online digital workflow. Today, most uh, of the our, our customers' customers, our end customers, are expecting a speedy end-to-end -end digital experience across multiple mediums, where they get it and other organizations are expecting it here. That's becoming the, the norm. Paper-based processes negatively impact customer engagement. Online applications are now expected as standard, and you and the more you digitize the process, the greater the benefits. For an example, Customers who have implemented our Easy e-signatures capability, and that is about instead of having a manual-based process, they do um, uh, digital online signatures, have experienced a massive 20% increase in application completion rates. And that kind of makes sense. If you don't have to break off and then print, download, print off a document, sign them and scan them, then upload them again, but actually can do it online, you are probably going to finish the process quicker. Um, what they're also is looking to eliminate tasks for customers in this digital process. Quite often, very simply, by doing having pre-filled capability, which can make it fast for customers to complete forms and improve accuracy of the information captured, which leads to better decision making. Um, also, providing a multiple platform option um, in their, their suite is also very important because it matches the work habits of the, um, the customers. Mobile accessibility allows customers to complete application forms from anywhere. There's no need to just have their laptop. Another very important that's quite, quite often um, overlooked is having a good branded experience because the customer wants to know that you're dealing with you and they want to feel that you, you are the one dealing with them all the way through. So quite often having a good branded experience is, is key. And one that's actually come up more and more in the conversations, um, both in our research, but also in, in talking to customers, is security and privacy. And that's driven by all that negative press about hacking and people becoming very sensitive about providing personal data. Um, so when you're looking at your customer experience, you need to provide a reassurance along the way that their data is, will be safe and secure and won't be hacked by bad actors. By using things, by emphasizing the use of things like e-signatures or encryption, but it's not only about that. It's about only collecting the data you need to make a decision. Um, first of all, that helps speed up the actual process of capturing information and the whole onboard process, but also this decreases exposure. Um, and another consideration is about data storage. That once you, for example, confirm your identity, how much of that do you need to store for auditing purposes, and then what can you can what can you delete? Because it's very hard for hackers to steal what doesn't exist. Yeah, awesome. Thanks for that, Frank. Um, one of my favorite uh, features that we have is the pre-fill capability, but also the ability to do things online because 
you know, a lot of people are getting things done on the way home on the train or on the bus. And if they have to wait to get home or to the office to fill out an application form and have everything on hand, it's more likely that they're going to keep putting it off um, or start filling it out and then having to drop out of it um, because they don't have all the right information. Whereas if we put the pre-fill in, um, you know, they can just simply type in their business name and we um, fill out um, all the rest of the details. Um, so a really good um, feature to have in trying to improve completion rates. Um, definitely one of my, um, you know, it, it's, it's quite a simple feature, but it's so, so effective. Um, so I, ho I hope everyone knows about that because it's very helpful. Um, cool. So um, I guess we've talked about the, you know, the, the end user experience and what customers are expecting of our customers, right? Um, talk us through the process for businesses who are, who are, you know, assessing customers and trying to onboard them. What's their process um, in doing the assessment? And, um, well, sorry, hold on. Um, moving on. To the next slide. Um, what, it, what are some of the capabilities or how do we um, enable um, the process or make things easier for our customers? Yeah, the conversation that we'd like to have with customers is that although you're digitizing it, it's a great opportunity to revise the whole onboarding process and the different stages of it. So it's not just about implementing a piece of software and technology. It's actually a bit of what the process re-engineering and a process review. Um, and the, the main steps that um, to go through to keep in consideration is the collection of the data, which is a very critical step and very important to make sure it's simple, clear, that it's comprehensive and accurate, um, and you're collecting accurate data, um, and that you collect it first time. Because if you can collect it first time, it, it reduces the need for reworking, which in, can impact customer satisfaction, but also increase your costs. Um, the next stage is the due diligence checks and assessments, and that is we've collected the data, is it valid? And for example, if you're providing direct information, is that direct information correct? And um, does that director actually exist? And are you that director who's actually signing the form? Um, then when you get that information, uh, then you, you're now getting ready to collect, to gather the extra credit risk data for the decision, such as the credit reports. And then we go on to the decision process. Um, as I mentioned before, quite a few customers, quite a few uh, organizations now are looking at a stage process where actually this is, this is like almost going through several times. And it's done in the background where you collect a certain amount of information and you're making a quick decisioning on that one or whether we actually want to proceed to gather the rest of the information from a customer um, so that you're not actually spending an extra, a lot of money on checks which are not required because it's pretty obvious we would never give them credit or a lot of credit in the first place. Um, in the decisioning process, as I mentioned before, um, a lot of customers are, are, are understanding whether they want to go through a, a, an automated or a manual process, i.e. they have a, the onboarding uh, manager uh, or credit manager actually um, checking the data um, themselves or a hybrid. And it can take many forms of hybrid, as we mentioned before, which can be is um, providing some amount of credit automated and then providing extra credit on uh, requested on extra checks. Or it can be is just automating a certain amount straight through and everything between, say, a, between, say, a, a B2 and a, 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 a C2 is, all, is actually a manual, manual check. Um, then, of course, we, we get to make the decision, you get the approval, hopefully, and then um, if it makes sense, and then we do open an account. And opening an account, um, quite a few companies um, are now looking at the, the security part of it. Well, that's trade insurance, of course, but also um, PPSR. Um, and that is the Personal Property Securities Register, which is a national online register, online register managed by the federal government. Um, and individuals and organizations can use the PPSR to register and search for debts, debts and other security interests on personal property. It's a very cheap way of making an unsecured loan a secured loan. And it's something of which we definitely recommend, depending on your circumstances that you, you look at, part of your onboarding solution and then of course once that's been done you can actually start trading 
Yeah, awesome. Um, definitely interesting about um, the decisioning part. Um, automation definitely helps um, speed up that process, right? And um, as companies try to grow their business, they're looking for uh, efficiencies where they can, um, but also have that flexibility to have that human decisioning element to it, um, especially when they have complex customers or um, complex deals. Um, and you know, all, all these different tools that we have um, try to increase customer acquisition by doing things faster. Um, but it's definitely important to make sure that you have the due diligence checks and credit assessments there to make sure that um, the deals and the customers that they're onboarding um, will help them be profitable instead of loss making. Um, so just on that note, um, you talked about due, due diligence checks and credit assessments. I think um, the audience that we have here today are, are pretty familiar with that credit assessment process, but um, talk us through more about the due diligence checks um, that we have and you know why, why do we need to do those checks or what kind of checks um, uh, are beneficial in that um, assessment process? Yeah, that's the, the 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 step between we've now captured the information and we just have to validate it. It's correct, and that just no, there's no fraud, but also it's accurate. Um, and then also understand what the structure of the companies, as you said, is that quite often the structure of the companies they're dealing with are actually fairly complex, and that takes two um, two areas. One is company verification and the other one is individual verification or usually the individual is a director or directors are associated with it in the company verification i mean obviously the 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 the, the listeners are, are very uh, aware of the different checks that you can make around the australian business register the ato and asset checks make sure that the company exists and these are documents are, are valid and the numbers and the information you can valid Another area that is uh, we're finding more and more credit managers are looking into is something called the UBO or the ultimate beneficial owners, um, which is who actually owns the company. Although this company is actually applying for credit, who is the director and who's actually um, who owns this company? It's another, you know, we have the cross directorship, which is important, but this one is about who actually owns the company, who has a controlling share or a, a, an important share in the company. And how far does that go back? So you actually can then make a decision based on knowing who's actually the company we're working with and who's actually controlling it. Um, and then, of course, we go for the, the individual verification. And that takes in, in uh, a couple of steps in it. The first one is you need to verify, you know, document verification, the DVS is, and that's basically, um, does Frank McKenna exist? And is these documents, does he, does he actually exist? And the next one, which we're finding, especially when those high risk areas and high risk industries, is the live test, which is, and are you Frank McKenna to, to prevent fraud? So again, this can be all digitized, where actually you can provide their verification of the documentation in a couple of, of seconds, and also verify that it is actually them uh, through photo, photo verification online and get the whole verification process done in five minutes it's it's quite amazing a huge amount of time something that could take weeks if people go looking for documents you can actually do it in a few minutes and of course depending on the uh, industry um, that you're working in you also have to do some of your compliance checks such as the anti-money laundering counterterrorism or pep um, checks one of this uh, the areas i would definitely um, highlight here agnes is and again, it's quite amazing when you dig into the statistics around it, but capturing the information correctly and doing it correctly can actually, not only is it important to making a good credit decision, but actually can reduce the amount of uh, work. We have found, um, looking at our, our data as we see our customers working, is that 30% of Know Your Customer um, steps have to go back for a rework. That means a third of all people who actually get their IDs verified and checked have to go back and ask for more information or ask for the information again because the photo wasn't correct, the information we couldn't find, that the number was putting in correctly. Um, this is a huge cost, but if you get that correct and use the right technologies and use the right processes, 
you can reduce that then into, and for example, our solution, can reduce that then into an 8% rework. That's a 22% savings in time and effort, as well as increasing customer satisfaction. So thinking across those steps, thinking about the process of it, but also making sure that you capture accurately up front can save you a lot of time and money later on. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, no one wants to go um, print, scan, and oh, scan and protocol um, their ID documents to go get it certified by a JP because no one knows where to find them. Um, and also at the same time, there's so many good fake ID documents these days that you know a fraudster can um, take someone's wallet, um, use the driver's license information, slap their um, photo on it instead of the original person um, and then get that certified and you, you would never know without you know biometrics and all the other um, digital tools that exist to try and mitigate um, fraud. Um, cool so you know we've talked about the process as well um, and all of this obviously needs um, things to facilita uh, facilitate uh, you know, the due diligence checks, the credit assessments, the um, decisioning, and also facilitating how, how all that um, happens in the front end. Um, so what are the elements um, that we have that facilitates all of this for our customers and um, their customers to, to meet you know, the end user or the, the end customer's experience? Uh, one of the steps actually I'd like to highlight, which is not kind of thought about quite often is that the onboarding process is actually a collaboration so to maximize growth and to uh, minimize loss um, it's a collaboration um, between the credit teams the sales teams and the customers everybody wants the customer to get through the process as quickly as possible but quite often when people are looking at solutions and processes to do that the handovers aren't thought about as well as they potentially could be. And it's an area of focus I know that a lot of our customers are looking at because that's where the failure happens. And by working in collaboration between the different teams and having software that facilitates that, you can actually speed up the process while increasing the customer satisfaction on the journey. Example of that is in the customer, they like to know with clarity of where they are in their application journey and, and also be alerted to any actions they need and reminders for things that they've forgotten. And quite often we find that if when the sales teams have a great relationship with the, with the credit teams, that the credit teams can then use the sales teams as a way, not only letting them understand where the application is, because obviously it's a sale for them, um, but also they can actually help the customer check the right data, clarify what needs to be done, and actually help them through the process. So they can help them be the guide and not just the up to the credit team to do that but in order to do that everybody needs to know where that application is on the journey and of course again with the credit teams they would they want to know where the status is of an actual application and also be able to alert both the sales team and the customer if they need an extra piece of information on that one and quite often we find that when uh, customers are preventing other processes that us reminding them of that one actually can increase uh, satisfaction by a huge amount, as well as decreasing uh, completion times. Yeah, awesome. Um, and you know, all, I guess customers all want um, instant approvals these days, so they want everything instantly, regardless of whether it's ordering food or getting a credit decision, right? Um, you know, these days, actually a few years ago, um, the 60 second credit card approvals have come along and that's become the norm and everyone just expects that out of everyone else now, um, including, you know, big trade credit deals. Um, so that expectation has flowed through and I'm glad that a lot of businesses are taking the time to focus on customer experience and improving that um, so that it's also efficient for themselves as well as the other customer who's trying to get along with their own business and get things done. Um, so, you know, we've talked about automation, we've talked about user experience and due diligence. Um, what else do you think is the secret sauce to enabling customer experience? Um, we, we've covered off, you know, what do the end users or the end customer um, expect? And we've also explored um, what the process is behind the scenes for um, credit teams and sales teams to try and push the deal along or the application along so that they can get um, customers onboarded faster. Um, 
yeah, is there anything else you would add or um, any other insights that you would um, provide? Um, uh, yes, I can say. Ultimately, is is that to speed up the to to grow the customer to to speed up the process to have a better customer experience does not have to compromise the actual due diligence and the risk assessment you put on the other side. They can go hand in hand. Uh, our experience um, would say it is that you just need to take a step back beforehand and think about okay, what is our current processes? What is the customer experience? If you think about what we're asking the customer to do, because uh, as I mentioned before, everybody wants to get through the process as quickly as possible. That's what they like to do, and everybody wants it to be a fair and equitable process as well. So, thinking about how can we reduce the amount of uh, manual or paper-based approaches to it? And how can we digitize it? Taking a step back and looking, actually, now that we have this opportunity to, to, to do our processes again and have the software help speed up the process and capture information better, is there a way to actually maybe do a staged approach on the process? Um, we can also, as well as that, understand what is the interaction between the main stakeholders here, the end customer and their experience in both the speed, the branding, security, and flexibility, the sales teams, and how they can help facilitate that process. And also, the credit managers are actually going through that process overall. And of course, with the due diligence, you don't have to compromise on the, the, the due diligence that you do and also the credit decisioning, because automation actually means you can capture the information up front, you can check it quicker in real time, and also you can get more information to make better decisions. And then using this, the technology itself to say, okay, for some decisions, we want to automate it because it's always a yes or it's always a no. And then for other ones, having the right amount of information to make a better decision that appears up there while letting the customer understand where you are, they are in the journey, as well as the sales teams. All of those things can help uh, improve the customer experience, improve sales, but at the same time, reducing those uh, write-offs um, that you obviously you were focused on as a, as a company. Um, a, a delicate balance between automating as much as you can to get some straight through processing and instant approvals, um, but also making sure that you're still doing the due diligence in the back end um, to make sure that you're mitigating any 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 losses or um, reducing any risk, right? Um, and the, the icing on the cake is making sure that you still have uh, or you're still delivering a good user experience uh, for customers because otherwise if it all becomes too difficult they'll just run away or potentially go to a, um, a competitor which is the worst case scenario um, when your sales team of works so hard to try and win their business um, you know when, when it comes to the last hurdle that's where you don't want to lose it um, so definitely a really, really good, um, you know, uh, an area where um, there's a lot of opportunity, but also a lot of risk. So um, I'm excited for what you and your team are going to be building out and delivering for our customers. There's certainly a lot of challenges out there that we can help solve. Um, just conscious of time, I, um, we do have to wrap up this webinar, but thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, just uh, we, we've talked a lot about um you know all the different things that we can do for onboarding at creditor watch um uh if anyone wants to um, be contacted about any information uh, um about applying easy or other um onboarding products um please let us know in the poll um and one of our reps will reach out to you as soon as possible um we do have other webinar series available and coming up. So um, be sure to check out our website on the webinars page and register for them. Um, we'd love to hear your feedback as well if you have any on um, what you'd love to hear from us in future webinars. Um, thank you again, everyone, for joining. Thank you, Frank, for joining me today. It was a great first webinar from you and we hope to have you on board um, on more webinars in the future. Thanks very much and, and thank you, everybody. I really enjoyed today. Thanks. Bye.